First at four, it's the day many Michigan business owners and customers have been waiting for, but it still comes with a word of warning for your family. We've got breaking news in the entertainment world. A sitcom star from the 1990s has died after a very brief battle with cancer. And we'll check in with Ben. Karen, some of us are actually still seeing snow, but that's winding down. Everybody gets the cold and waiting to see these numbers. Karen, Paula? She's an 11-year-old prodigy who is reaching past her own pandemic isolation to inspire teachers and other students. Teacher, teach me the way. Disney, have you met this kid? Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Karen Drew. First at four, indoor dining has returned to Michigan for the first time since November, but that comeback comes with some restrictions and a warning from state health leaders. The biggest rules limit capacity to 25% or up to 100 people inside any restaurant. Tables must be six feet apart with no more than six people per table. Businesses are also asked to collect contact information for contact tracing purposes, and indoor dining must close by 10 p.m. Sean Lay is talking with local owners about this change and how they're coping with the ongoing crisis. Good afternoon, everyone. We're here at Lily's in Royal Oak, right on Washington, opening for limited indoor dining. They opened at noon today, and customers started coming right in. Open until 8 o'clock tonight. They're following all those strict rules from the state, allowing restaurants today to reopen at just 25% capacity. Lily says that's really better than nothing. Lily's, like so many, have spent so much to find really creative ways to offer carryout, outdoor dining, outdoor tent dining, igloo, greenhouse dining, just about anything to keep business moving. So what do customers think? Many are very excited just to get out of the house and sit down at a restaurant. So much more on this big day for restaurants coming up at 5 o'clock. And don't forget, when state health officials announced indoor dining would return, they also warned it does come with some health risks. Everyone needs to decide what level of risk is acceptable based on their own personal circumstances. Meantime, today, the state of Michigan is reporting more than 2,000 new cases of COVID-19 over the past two days. We've also lost another eight Michiganders to the virus. Meantime, the state has just reopened unemployment claims for those who benefits ran out in December, but they're now eligible to claim recently extended federal benefits. Business editor Robin Loney will dig into how that works when you join us for Local 4 News at 5. Well, after a brutal 2020 election, Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson is proposing reforms for the future. They include requiring absentee ballot applications to be mailed to registered voters every two years, giving clerks an extra two weeks to process ballots, and making Election Day a state holiday. Benson says protecting democracy is a top priority. Here in Michigan, we will not be sidetracked by these deceitful attacks on our democracy, for the will of Michigan voters is clear. They want elections that are strong, secure, and accessible. They want us to build on the successes of our 2020 elections and advance democracy and the road ahead. Now, these proposals do have to go through the legislature. Tonight at 5, we'll take a closer look at what Benson has planned, and we're starting to get the first Republican reaction to her proposals. Well, today is the start of Black History Month. In a joint video, Governor Whitmer and Lieutenant Governor Garland Gilchrist reflect upon the contributions of black Americans who have shaped history. It's clear that from the civil rights movement to the righteous marches against racial injustice, black Americans have shown us that we must speak out and stand tall for justice. As we move forward, I encourage everyone to learn about the impact that black people have brought about in the past and present. Then use what you learn to inspire and propel your own imagination and efforts to make the world a better, more inclusive, more enlightened place. Now, we do have several special reports planned in the month ahead right here on Local 4. And we also created an entire page at ClickOnDetroit.com where you will be able to see and share those stories. In the first forecast, we've seen some light snow this afternoon. Nothing like that storm hitting the East Coast. Ben Bailey, the question, are those flurries still hanging around? Yeah, we do have some snow in parts of the area, Karen. Other spots not only seeing dry conditions, but some of us actually getting sunshine in the north and west zone. Let's go to Storm Tracker 4, and you can see where this persistent snow has been uh, for the last few hours. And there it is on the east side, down into the south zone. 
And that hour long loop shows it's not moving all that much, but we do expect this stuff to wrap up uh, pretty shortly here. You can see the south zone is seeing most of it, but we're by far on the tail end of what has been a huge system. Most of that is out on the east coast, and you can see that there with it all spinning there across Boston, New York, down to Philly. Winter storm warnings are up for a good chunk of the northeast. And uh, we're just seeing the remnants of a little bit of that snow. In fact, it is winding down tonight. We'll see it gone by about sunset. And then we're looking at dry conditions from there on out. As far as temperatures go tonight, well, they're going to be on the low side, but not anything like what we've got at the end of the forecast. And we'll look at that in a few minutes. Karen? President Biden's first big test in Congress is already underway. The president called for unity during his inauguration. But the two parties seem to be worlds apart right now on COVID relief. Kimberly Gill in the newsroom with a look at what's at stake. Kim. Hi, Karen. Good afternoon. In general, there's a lot of, of money at stake. Uh, President Biden has been pushing a new COVID relief plan worth $1.9 trillion. Ten of the more re moderate Republicans have a different plan, though. They sent a proposal to the White House worth around $600 billion, about one-third of the president's plan. One big difference, Republicans want to specifically target those new $1,400 payments to individuals who make $50,000 or less and families who make $100,000 or less. Under Biden's plan, some families who make up to $300,000 could receive some stimulus money. Progressive Democrats are urging the president to push a big plan through without Republican votes if necessary. The White House, though, says the president wants to listen to the other side. He felt it was, uh, you know, an effort to ha engage uh, and engage on a bipartisan basis, and that's why he invited them to the White House today. But his view is that uh, the size of the package needs to be commensurate with the crisis the crises we're facing, the dual crises we're facing, hence uh, why he proposed a package that's $1.9 trillion. Yeah, and Karen, the 10 Republicans behind this new proposal are expected at the White House in about an hour or so. We'll have more from Washington tonight on the news at 5 as we get the first reaction after that meeting. For now, we'll send it back to you. All right. Thank you, Kim. Sure. We do have some sad breaking news today. Dustin Diamond, who played Screech on the 1990s sitcom Saved by the Bell, has died. The popular show made Diamond a household name and part of American pop culture in the early 1990s. He had struggles later in life and was just diagnosed with cancer three weeks ago. A spokesperson released a statement saying Diamond's family and friends are glad he did not suffer. Dustin Diamond was just 44 years old. Now, the story behind music videos like this. They're connecting an amazing 11-year-old girl to a new school district in the middle of a pandemic. She's overcoming a sense of isolation and reaching out with positive messages. Our Paula Tutman recently got in touch with this talented girl and thought you should meet her as well. Hello everyone, my name is Charity Alexis and I would like to welcome you to Amazing Mondays. At 11 years old, she's positioning herself as a messaging master. 2020 is finally over, so today I would like to talk to you about letting go and moving forward. A recent transplant from Texas, Charity Alexis barely had time to make in-person friends in her new school district before the COVID-19 pandemic shut the doors. And while remote learning has been tough because of the lack of face-to-face -face interaction. You can't replace it. I mean, as I said, those the social interaction, um, there are a lot of things that you don't, you may not notice. Um, when you're dealing remotely opposed to being right there with the student. When COVID first hit, I was really sad and I miss my teachers and also my peers as well. And so the sixth grader in the Pontiac School District decided to reach out to the virtual world around her to make friends. Talking to my mom and I was like, I want to write a song about my teachers to let them know how much they mean to me. I wake in the morning start on my way I can't wait to see you cuz it's a new day I want to help people like some people might feel not good about themselves or they might miss their teacher so I just want to help them and uplift them teacher teach me the way she writes what she's experiencing and what's in her heart she speaks to her peers, most of whom she's never met face to face. She was concerned about all the computer screen time, and so she wanted to get kids up and moving. When we were in school, 
we had like gym and stuff. So we had stuff to do. So now since we're virtual, we don't have that much activities to go on. So I wanted to help kids and to get pumped up. And I'm here to help you get motivated with this new dance craze that I created. She delightfully spreads music and hope. Be determined to bring only positive energy in your life and spread your wings and fly like a butterfly. See you again next Monday. Everywhere she goes. You make a difference in my life. Starting with teachers. Okay, so the big question I have is Disney. Have you met this kid? Karen, I stumbled over her while working on another story. She's got quite the repertory of videos. We're going to put a link to uh, several of them, including the teacher's one, so you can share it with a teacher you love on clickondetroit.com and my social media page, Local 4, Paula Tupman. Listen, I just hope she remembers me when she's opening for Beyonce, uh, performing with Beyonce, or playing Beyonce in the movies. My goodness, her voice is remarkable, and I just love her spirit. Looking forward to following her on social media. Thank you, Paula. We appreciate the good news. Still ahead, your first of four legendary singer who's entertained generations of fans goes public with some serious health problems. He's been keeping quiet for years. Also, the new foreign policy hotspot facing the Biden administration, the military coup, and the connection to China. First, a disturbing case of vandalism. We'll talk about what happened to the 65-year-old tortoise and what's next for the man who's under arrest.